Hey, this is head coach Hugh Jackson, the greatest coach of all time. You're listening to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, welcome to the podcast. Gather round your transistor. That's the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. If you're nasty, I'm your host, Mike, the Fantasy Hitman, right? Joined by my BFF extraordinaire, Jason, the dude more. I don't know. <laughs> that's... <laughs> I was trying to find something, and I landed on the dude. Okay. I feel like that's taken. It it is. I mean, to be fair, I have multiple nicknames that I have called you throughout our that's our true. friendship. That's true. Big cat, big cat. I've called you a big gravy. Mm-hmm. It's always uh, I'm it's not, always big. It's always big. <laughs> well, I can't call you. I'm not gonna. I'm right. not gonna give you the little John. Right. Like, that's, that's thank you. I'm not gonna patronize you. But little John was, for the record, very big. I know. I think <laughs> it's, it's hilarious. He's big, but we call him little. Like that's. That's what counted for humor back in uh, whenever Robin Hood was written. What was that written in, like, uh, 2500 B.C.? Yeah. Very old literature. It wasn't... It, yeah, whatever. No, it wasn't we, that We old. won't get into Robin Hood. What we will be getting in, into today, it's Thursday. It is matchup time. We're going to take it up to 100 with our special picks of the of the week. You know, we like to grab some outliers oh yeah we want to go deep grab some players that maybe you're not expecting to have a good game that uh that, that could pop off yeah andy's going real deep this week yeah i can't wait he's <laughs> going he's going uh down in the trenches if you want to watch the show we are available in the visual format youtube.com slash the fantasy footballers follow our socials instagram.com slash fantasy footballers you want some of that hot Twitter action? Oh, oh, I do. Oh, brother, we're there. At the FF Ballers. Jason is at Jason FFL. I am at FF Hitman. And Andy is at Andy Holloway. I mean, I guess we're just going to get right into the show, Jay. Taking it up to 100. Presented by Head & Shoulders. Available at Walmart. All right. Last week, whew, it was it was a little bit tough on the streets. Yeah, I mean, I, there there were some there were some good games there. Um, you know, I I wouldn't say that they were outright hits, but your Darnell we, Mooney was a he took uh, it like to seventy. Yeah, Robbie Anderson had a good game, and I picked poorly between the two, Aguilar and Ruggs. Yeah, you picked the wrong Raiders wide receiver. So today, Jason. To redeem yourself, who's taking it up to 100 this week? I'm going with a different rookie. I'm going with a with another one this <laughs> Surely week. it will work out this time. <laughs> I think it will. And I'm taking Jalen Rager, uh, rookie sensation, hopefully, for the Philadelphia Eagles. He came back from injury in his first game back. Was at 73% of snaps. That's a great number because it says he's back, but he wasn't all the way back to what he was playing at prior to the injury, then they get the bye week, so he's good to go now. Uh, you don't worry about the injury. He had a 21% market share, um, and and I think it's time. You know, he's he's a first-round rookie who's been watching all these. I mean, what a great year for rookie wide receivers in the NFL. Sure. And he's been watching all these guys drafted behind him, playing, getting all this pub, and his opportunity is going to come this week in a divisional matchup against the Giants. I think – you know, what What you see with the snap percentages and the target share, uh, J Jalen Rager should be a decent start this week. And I'm going to go with John Brown from the Buffalo Bills. Uh, he is healthy. That's the number one thing about John Brown. He is healthy. He is ready to go. We saw him last week out on the field seeing 29% of the targets. The Buffalo, Buffalo Bills are taking on the Arizona Cardinals. I expect Stephon Diggs to see a Patrick Peterson shadow. Mm -hmm. And oof, everyone's favorite revenge game narrative. Oh yeah, John Brown has a chance to stick it to the team that brought him into the league, 
And look, highest over under of the week, at least the last time I looked, it was over 56 points expected from the bookmakers in Las Vegas. I want in on that action. I expect a lot of points yeah, that going down. Yeah, that should definitely be a high-scoring affair. I really like that. And then Andy picked a Jay Grizz special. Yeah, we did. I, I forgot to introduce the cardboard bear extraordinaire. Jay Grizz is filling in, <laughs> filling in over there with his big bear head. This guy, I mean, I didn't want to like insult him. That's a big bear head, dude. He's uh, you know why you do see bears the, have such big heads? You see some people and you're like, oh, that's a huge head. That's <laughs> yeah, what I think look, when I. Think and this of is coming Grizz. from a guy with a gigantic head. Yeah. Oh, it's tiny today, Mike. I need to bring him around with me. Yeah. Put Just, your arm over his shoulder. Who's got a big head now? The, so, the bear, the uh, fake bear. So who is Andy's? Taking it up to 100. Pounds. Well, you know it's a Jay Gris special, so we're going with Allen Robinson. Uh, he's been, you know, he, he's been good. He's been very good on the season. But if you look at the rankings, three of the last four weeks outside of the top 30, and he gets Minnesota 31st versus the pass. Okay. So, so he's it, expecting a monster game. It better be a monster game when you're saying Allen Robinson is going to take it up to 100. That's a, we got to have different different thresholds here. Yeah, I I'm, I've been going a little little more difficult and instead I'm actually I am going to pivot to Dalvin Cook <laughs> so let's uh but listen Fuglin you could take your hair up to 100 with head and shoulders available at Walmart pick yours up today check out next Tuesday's episode to hear how our up to 100 picks of the week week performed news and notes from around the league all right, it's time for the daily COVID update. McCole Hardman from the Kansas City Chiefs. He was placed on the reserve COVID-19 list on Wednesday. Kansas City is on bye. We don't know if he has contracted. We don't know if he was a close contact. Just something to be aware of because uh, the Lizard King could be back in action sooner than later. He should be back. Um, I mean, obviously, they're they're on bye, but he was questionable for this past week and I think the expectation the thought was that he was going to play but keeping him out of that game allowing him to get the extra bye week he will be back when they are back his tail has almost regenerated that's right he lost his tail early in the season and now it's uh after the bye week I think it should be fully grown Christian McCaffrey is now listed as doubtful uh much to the chagrin of fantasy football players everywhere because you still cannot put him in the IR spot, even though the entire world knows that Christian McCaffrey's not going to play. He's not playing. <laughs> he's, they've literally come out and said that he's got a chance to play next week. Yeah, a, a chance. He's got a chance to play. He got a second <laughs> opinion, and now he has a chance to play next week. And they're not talking incorrectly and in saying the word next. They don't mean this week. They mean the next week. And I can't move him to my IR to pick someone up off of waivers because <laughs> he's got a... a doubtful on his name status makers do the right thing do the right thing here and here what would it hurt let me just throw this out there because I, I mean i don't run the 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 ins and outs of the fantasy football platforms and the decision makers if you mark christian mccaffrey is out right now mm -hmm. helps us out yeah i mean we're, we're we're helping sustain your your business oh yeah fantasy football is a big part of nfl revenue yeah do it for the people if he's marked out and then suddenly he's in on sunday what happens? Well, then you have to, to <laughs> then you just have to activate him. Be no problemo. Come on, guys, Markimo. Seahawks coach Pete Carroll said it's uncertain whether Chris Carson will play in Week Ten. Status will be determined later this week. Hopefully, Carson is ready to go. Browns running back Nick Chubb is practicing. Nice. Head coach Kevin Stefanski said it, the call will be made on Friday whether or not he can play. Oh, he's playing. I mean, it is in a, the matchup. The Houston Texans, juicy. Yeah, that juicy. It, it's it's the only game this week that could have some bad weather, which is, uh, I mean, that's a Nick Chubb specialty. If you're saying, oh, we're gonna have to run the ball more uh, against Houston, yeah, give me Nick Chubb. Yeah, so be it. 49ers coach Kyle Shanahan has said Raheem Mostert will be out. Mostert was eligible to come off the IR. And he like he could have played this week. Mostert himself said he had hoped that he was going to be able to be activated. 
I would say it's trending towards next week. Tevin Coleman is also expected to be out. We haven't heard about the Rams wide receiver Cooper Cup. We know that two weeks ago he had a wrist injury. I mean, he was he balled out. Yeah, 21 targets, <laughs> which is very nice. In like multiple games, right? Not just no, one no, game. No, no, 21 targets in one game. That is absurd. It was. But in it, he did suffer a wrist injury. It didn't knock him out of the game, but it was something of, hey, we need to keep an eye on this. We know we're not going to get news, though, throughout the bye week. But the wrist injury has been acknowledged. Sean McVay, coach of the Rams, believes the wide receiver is on track to play. I expect him to play, but just make yeah. sure you're keeping an eye on it. On it. Jason, <laughs> Eagles <laughs> Yo, wide receiver. Baby. It's finally happening. I mean, you're... If anything can stop Jalen Rager from taking it to 100. It's, all, it's only this only this person could stop it. Al Sean Jeffrey was a full participant on at Wednesday's practice. Oh, baby. Now, this sounds like, oh, well, so he's going to play. But he's actually been a full participant at practice in the past. And then what happens is he got hurt again. He got hurt. <laughs> and he goes, oh, this calf is not fully healed so we'll we'll monitor and see too early to tell if he's going to be in but it is something to keep your eye on would you is this something that for for fantasy managers are is there a chance Alshon comes back and regains the number one role I mean Fulgham has gone full ham mm -hmm. Rager they drafted to be something you know special dynamic as a, as a speedster in the offense could Alshon Jeffrey come back and be a very fantasy relevant player? I think you need to leave the possibility open. I'm not going to project that, but when Alshon Jeffrey, I mean, even go back to last year on the when he was on the field and healthy, target machine got some. He had some games. Carson Wentz trusts Alshon Jeffrey, so you have to leave that possibility open. I'm not going to project it. I don't even know if he's going to play this week, right? But he certainly helps uh, Carson Wentz. Chargers head coach Anthony Lynn said he's leaning toward resting Justin Jackson this week in practice. They'll make the decision later if he's going to play versus the Dolphins. Yeah, when I when I read the the first report, it seems really like they're not going to play. Like he's going to practice, but he's not going to play this week. That's that's the way that I took it. Um, and Trumaine Pope is uh, back. He practiced. yeah, running back, uh, backup running back for the Chargers. It's a murky situation. Joshua Kelly is the only one who seems like we know for sure he's going to be on the field. He's going to get opportunities. It's funny because he is the number two running back. Right. No matter, no matter what. what. <laughs> it doesn't matter if it, if it's Eckler or Justin Jackson it's or like, hey, hey, Coach, Coach Lynn, Balazs. Justin Jackson just went out for the game. You think this is the time I'll get my shot? No. No, no you, Josh. You're we, our number two running back. We, we've got Kalen Balazs here. We scooped him up from the Jets yeah I mean th it does make it murky like you said between trying to figure out if they would play Kalen Balazs or or Tremaine Pope in this matchup if I had to guess <laughs> how do you how do you possibly guess because I would I, guess Pope what I saw from Pope before he got injured was really good he he was very good for their team and uh, then he got injured, and then they brought up Kalen Balazs, so it was, it was Pope ahead of him. But then Balazs did really well. Balazs still can't catch, though. So. That is true. Tremaine, Pope. Tremaine Pope caught five of his seven targets, only got 28 yards on that a couple weeks ago against Denver, but I would put the money on Pope. Fellas that did not practice on Wednesday, Antonio Gibson has the, a shoulder injury. For him, it's just Wednesday. We're not going to panic just yet. More concerning, though, Kenny Galladay held out, uh, and he already missed a week. Joe Mixon has missed two weeks and had a bye week. And had the bye week and then missed practice. That is a very bad sign. Make sure Giovanni Bernard is rostered in yes. the league. Daryl Henderson, same thing. Knocked out a couple weeks ago, had the bye week to rest. Still have to monitor that. Uh, and then the other guys we're not yet concerned about, but you know, stay tuned. We will update you when we can. Also, I mean, if you want more information about injuries, we are we do fantasy football here, but we have someone we work with. His name is Matthew Betts. He is a certified PT, 
and he puts out a weekly episode breaking down injuries, giving his opinion from the medical side of things. And that is a podcast that is exclusive for uh, some supporters over at jointhefoot.com. So if you want in on that, it's been incredibly helpful. The, uh, the feedback on it has been tremendous. So if you want to check that out, that would be jointhefoot.com. Jason, are you ready for some matchups? Uh, or do yeah. we have more news? Well, we've got a something? little bit of updates on the Thursday night game. Uh, the game tonight, T.Y. Hilton hmm. will play. Jack Doyle hooray. is out. You know, you say hooray, but it's like this matchup is so good for wide receivers. I mean, I don't love Phillip Rivers, but he's got it done before. I, I'm not playing T.Y. Hilton, but I wouldn't be surprised okay. if, if he actually made a little bit of noise. Mo Alley Cox dealing with a knee issue. He practiced in full. He should be good to go. Probably because his knees are so gigantic <laughs> yeah i mean uh, you you try to have that big <laughs> yes. um and then in in uh unfortunate sad news Corey davis's brother yeah uh just passed away we have not heard uh whether or not this will put Corey davis's status in jeopardy but if you if you have him right now in your lineup uh you need to at least be aware that there's a chance maybe he could not play just pay attention to the news and uh leading up to game time Fantasy Forecast. All right, on by this week, the Falcons, the boys, Kansas City, and the New York Jets. The first matchup we want to talk about, the Houston Texans versus the Cleveland Browns. We have a 49-point over-under. The Cleveland Browns are 5-3. and three. Houston is 2-6. and six. And that means that the Cleveland Browns are favored by just over a field goal. We got 3.5 points. What are your storylines that you are looking at from this game, Jay? Well, I, I was very excited to see what Baker could do without Odell Beckham. That was one of the things I was looking at the most because the Houston Texans defense has really just been bad across the board. Uh, it doesn't matter if you're saying, well, are they bad against the running game or the passing game or tight ends or sure. quarterbacks or wide Sure. Sure. <laughs> Yes, they are bad at, against all of those positions. And so I was actually really excited to see this Browns offense click with the passing game coming from the running game. Unfortunately, one of my storylines for this game is, again, this being in Cleveland, uh, projects to be a bad weather game with 22-mile-an-hour wins. Mm. So, you you know, the passing game, you, you're probably dealing with more short stuff, which is fine, right? You've got Jarvis Landry and mm -hmm. Austin Hooper. Great options. But I do think that kind of gets in the way of the barn burner I was hoping for because when I looked last week at this matchup, this Houston Texans-Browns matchup, I thought was going to be a fan fantasy bonanza. And it seems like, you know, I'm, I'm still going to play um, the receiving game, and, and, uh, but, I, but I'm tempering the, the expectations on, on both sides of the ball. Superstar running back Nick Chubb, like we talked about in the news, he could be back this week if he is activated. He is activated for your fantasy football lineup. What does that do to Kareem Hunt? Well, a reminder, we've seen Kareem Hunt and Nick Chubb in three games. Opportunities for Kareem Hunt, 19-11-19. Nick Chubb being on the field, or I should say uh, being active, has not stopped Kareem Hunt from eating. No, you play both of those players. Correct. It, this is Al Borland's between the trenches matchup of the week. What is uh, look, okay. <laughs> I saw that in our show, Doc. I didn't read it because I have no idea. Did I miss a meeting? Uh, no, this is... Al uh, Borland's getting a segment this now? This is a Borgogan special. Kyle, the editor, has uh, deemed that. But basically, it's the biggest discrepancy of the week. Cleveland is third best in adjusted line yards. Their offensive line has been really good. Houston's defensive line is 31st best. So the the gap should be wide in the... the <clears throat> the running lanes should be open for gotcha. the Cleveland Browns. And Al Borland is messaging me. He's claiming he had no idea this was what this was. Yeah, you know, I apologize. I said Kyle, the editor, put Malarkey. this in. I, I know it I was call Al nonsense Bo on Al you. Al Borland put this in. Absolutely. Uh, on the other side of the ball for the running backs, David Johnson, he, has, or he was in the concussion protocol. He got knocked out last week. That turned into 81% of the snaps going to Duke Johnson. 20 opportunities and revenge game Jason Duke oh, Johnson yeah so uh, let's break this down if David Johnson is activated from his concussion uh, or from the concussion protocol you put him right back in I assume I will be 
extremely surprised if okay. David Johnson is active for this game. Uh, I would agree with you if he is activated from the concussion, he's in the lineup. But I think we should look at this game assuming that it will be Duke Johnson. And, uh, you know... So, that, what, so what confidence level are you playing Duke Johnson with right now? Uh, the last six weeks, the Browns have given up the 22nd most points to the running back position. Yeah, I mean, I, I have enough confidence. You you saw him with 20 opportunities, 16 carries last week. He can catch the ball, although they don't really pass to the running back as much as you would like. Uh, but, I, I, you know, he's not a must-start player, but he's certainly someone that if you're like, you know, I've got some bad matchups, the opportunities will be there for him. He will be a three-down back, and he's good. He's not, he's not a bad back, so I, I would absolutely play Duke Johnson. All right. Start sick questions, Jason. Duke Johnson without David there or J.K. Dobbins against the Patriots without Mark Ingram? That is a perfect example of where you're saying, I don't feel like either is a must start. I would definitely go Duke Johnson there. All right. Duke Johnson without David or let's go <laughs> uh, Johnny Taylor. Tonight. I knew it. I knew that was the name you were going to give. I was, was it? Did my cackle give it away? Well, I thought it. I was looking at my list, and I thought it beforehand. But once you cackled, it was like, oh, yeah, this is JTT. Um, I would play Duke Johnson because of clarity. Ooh. Just because. I mean, the, the problem is we, you won't know that tonight I, because of the David Johnson injury. Just I just oh, want to point out. That's a really good point. Just pointing out like There's, where we are with Jonathan Taylor. Yeah. Well, actually. Now that you bring that up, I, I almost wonder if you're backed into – because there is still a chance that David Johnson plays, and if that happens, Duke Johnson is pretty irrelevant. So you might – if those are your only two options, you might be forced into uh, playing JTT. But if I knew David Johnson was out, I, I would certainly pick Duke Johnson. Will Fuller, you play him. Brandon Cooks, since we ceremoniously retired him <laughs> – Brandon Cooks. Is uh, he has been balling out the past four weeks. He's the wide receiver six in fantasy points per game. He found his mojo. He got his groove back. You play him without question. I really like Jarvis Landry. I'm going to talk about him in the start of the week section. Any chance you're playing Rashard Higgins, Jason? I, you like Austin Hooper. I really like Austin Hooper as well. Don't really need to break him down, but Rashard Higgins. Six for 110 uh, when Beckham went out. Week eight was the weather game. Got to kind of throw that uh, into the garbage. Granted, this might be another weathery game. The last six weeks, the Houston Texans, 30th against fantasy wide receivers, giving up over 40 points a game to the position. Yeah, that's why I was really excited for what Baker could do in this matchup. But with the weather and with the fact that Higgins has a long history of um, big games and then disappearing, I, I don't feel like Higgins is someone that I can trust here. Let's say that we wake up Sunday morning and they're saying, oh, the weather, it's the wind is just 15, 10 to 15 miles 15 an hour. Is still the, 15 is the, is the barometer. That's where it starts to favor the running game over the passing game. It would, you know, if it was 10, then I would, I would be more willing because the matchup is, is good. But um, we're close enough. I feel pretty confident. With the way that their uh, stadium is, it's like right on the Great Lake there. And wind specifically has an abnormal effect on quarterbacks in Cleveland versus a lot of the other um, windy city, and I'm not just talking Chicago, um, games in, in open-air stadiums. I, I found that out when we had that massive weather week a couple weeks ago looking at data. So I, I do get concerned with the wind. Washington takes on Detroit. Washington sitting at 2-6. and six. Just a fraction out of the division lead. Detroit sitting at three and five. Uh, we the the lines are not fully certified yet because we don't know that it's Alex Smith. I mean, we know, we know. So it's similar to we know that Christian McCaffrey right. is not going to play, but they can't put. Anyways, so we're assuming that it is Alex Smith. He will be taking on Matthew Stafford. Uh, he has. Is this we we we've vetted this he has cleared the concussion protocol brooks yes sir all right so maddie stafford is back not a great matchup for the quarterback position against washington their defense holds it down seventh against fantasy quarterbacks ninth against fantasy running backs second against fantasy wide receivers 
Their weak point is the tight end, which speaks positively for TJ Hawkinson, who is pretty close to a locked-in smash play, considering that Travis Kelsey is out. If you're talking about rankings, how is TJ Hawkinson not in your top five, if not your top three? If not your top two. I mean, <laughs> you you got Waller, and then yeah, I think Hawkinson's next. He's next in my rankings. Yeah, so that's easy enough. Let's talk about the running back position. Antonio um Antonio Gibson, J.D. McKissick, they are in such a good spot here. The Detroit Lions, the last six weeks, giving up the most points to fantasy running backs. Unfortunately, we need more news on Antonio Gibson because he has the shoulder injury. We know that they don't trust him on third down. Uh, the stat was he's seen, I think, one touch on one third touch. down. Yeah, that's not the fun one touch, though. No, it's not, but, but Gibson has been fine on the season. He really has. I know people are disappointed. They wanted him to be just outstanding and do the David Johnson thing where he – Comes in unexpected as a third round pick and dominates. He, he's the running back fifteen on the season. He's been yeah, it's solid been a, week in week out. He has the ability to get touchdowns. I'm playing both running backs in this matchup, assuming that Gibson is healthy. Um, but J D McKissick is a guy that he is in play. Yeah, he should be started unless you've got just great options. In which case, congratulations on on having a, a good pivot on on your bench. J D McKissick a. Uh, Brief look into the future is my start of the week at the running back position, but back to that start sit. J.D. McKissick, a a Antonio Gibson, we're going to say he's playing. Maybe he's a little bit banged up. McKissick or Duke Johnson without David Johnson? Hmm. Uh, it, yeah. If you I, would, like maybe a three-down roll for Duke. Yeah, I think I would take the three-down roll for right. Duke over J.D. McKissick, but I, I do like both. All righty. Uh, and then over on the other side, you have DeAndre Swift, who – He's not getting on the field very much, but when he is on the field, he is getting opportunities. Listen to these numbers. They're ridiculous. So the last four weeks, you saw 38% of the snaps against Jacksonville, yet 18 opportunities, 45% of the snaps, 14 opportunities, and this last week against Minnesota, 40% of the snaps again, but 18 opportunities. He has been crushing for fantasy football if you have not been paying attention in the last five weeks. He has been a top 20 or the last five games, I'm sorry. He has been a top 20 running back just uh, four out of those five games. Two weeks ago against the Colts, it was a bust game. But how are you treating DeAndre Swift? Yeah, DeAndre Swift's you know arrow is pointing up. And even though I don't love this matchup necessarily, I think that the Washington football team's defense is underrated. They're a solid defensive line, um, a solid team all the way around. You've got to have DeAndre Swift – as someone that is probably going into your lineup. If you look at the first three weeks of the season, he was v not utilized to the to the point of, you know, in week three, he had two targets, no carries, nothing. But from that point on, he's been so good that he is now the running back 20 on the totality of the season. <laughs> That's wild. Um, I, I have a hard time trusting a Detroit Lions running game, but... Four uh, out of five games, Four man. out of five, he's top 20. He's And, and you just shared the opportunity that... That's what's important. The reason I have a hard time trusting it is because I feel like you could come out and all of a sudden he gets six carries and two targets. And if that is within the realm of possibility, but it seems like they're utilizing what they drafted him to be. And the most important part are the targets. He's getting four or five targets every single game and he has the talent to break one open. So yeah, I'm, I'm starting him. The question would be to me, would you start him, you know, over say JD McKissick on the other side of the ball? I would. I would, I, play, would as well. I would play DeAndre Swift over J.D. McKissick. Terry McLaurin for Washington, he is there's a, in. There's a bit of a talent gap between those two running backs. <laughs> that, that's fair. Uh, McLaurin is in, but on the other side, Marvin Jones, he came through with the touchdown. We're not expecting Kenny Galladay to play. The matchup is brutal for quarterbacks and wide receivers. Are you playing Marvin Jones as anything more than a an outside shot in your flex position. No, that's that's all he is. He's okay. a, he's a touchdown shot and he could get it, but I would bet against Marvin Jones this week. Before we move to our next matchup, ladies and gentlemen. Gentlemen you, and ladies. Are you enjoying this podcast? I sure am. You want to hear more from us? Oh boy, do I. Uh well, if you didn't know, we have an entertainment show. Some say it's a comedy show, some say it's in a multi-award winning comedy show what do you mean like the podcast awards best comedy show yeah back to back 
Two I mean, years in a row? Yeah. They, they say that. I don't say that. No, I, we would never. <laughs> of course not. Braggadocious. Uh, but the Spitballers podcast, it's our other show. It's our side hustle, if you will. Bringing a little bit more joy to Monday morning. We talk about nonsense. We just have fun. We cut loose. If you like the nonsense on the fantasy footballers, I guarantee you're going to love the Spitballers. It's a family-friendly comedy podcast. And it those is that. don't exist. Uh, hey, you like a, like a good poop joke? Spitballers. Oh boy, do I. Spitballers is for you. Jacksonville, one and seven. Green Bay, six and two. We have a 50 point over under. However, the Packers are favored by 13 points, giving them an implied team total of 31 and a half points, leaving Jacksonville with scraps at under 20 points. Jake Luton, he was, I, he exceeded expectations. Let's, let's say that. Yeah. <laughs> and then yeah. we will move on. Well, the expectations were very, very low. Yeah. Um, and so exceeding them was was not astronomically difficult, um, especially in a matchup against Houston, who is terrible. The Green Bay Packers passing game, you 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 can't really pass on them. They are Correct. a funnel defense, and what that means is they are trying to shut down the receiving game so much so that they're very beatable on the ground. And what that says is Jacksonville is is going to have some success with their undrafted rookie free agent sensation, James Robinson. He's a great play, but there's no chance I'm playing Jake Luton against the Green Bay Packers defense. DJ Chark is a player. He's, he's in question for me. Uh, the, the volume was there. They, they hit on the big play last week. Monitor the the news wire. Uh, Jair Alexander shut down cornerback. Mm -hmm. True shut down cornerback awesome. for the Green Bay Packers, but he did leave last week with a concussion. Monitor if he is going to play. If he is out, that is that's an, that's enough of a crack in the window that I'm willing to put uh, DJ Chark yeah, out there. Yeah, I, I agree. Now, if he is active, I I would I'd hope to bench Chark. That right. you don't have to. He came out and he had a great game. Um, I see he's way too high in my rankings right now. I need to move him down. This is an, I, I said the only game of, that mattered was for, for weather was the Cleveland game. The reason I said that, despite this game also having 20-plus mile-an-hour wins, is because historically Aaron Rodgers' numbers in bad weather games are exactly his average. It's unbelievable. For some reason, he can play in bad weather games and has no problem. So I don't change the Packers at all. And on the other side of the ball, it's not like I wanted the Jacksonville passing attack with Jake Luton. So it doesn't really have an effect outside of DJ Chark. But the deep ball will be a little bit more difficult to come by for DJ Chark with the weather. Yeah, and if you're looking at Jacksonville hoping, well, maybe they're going to go to the short game. Rookie LaVisca Chenault, who has been pretty solid for a rookie running back. He has a hamstring wide injury. Or wide receiver. Thank you. Uh, has a hamstring injury. He's likely to sit or be very limited. So you're going to have to pivot away from that. Aaron Jones is back. He's going to smash. Let's let's talk about Aaron Jones and Devontae Adams and figure out what should we do with them. Let's play them. Are you? Let's well, play them both. Can I? <laughs> I mean, this is, this is uh, there's no point it in discussing is, those guys. It is the rare combination where I want a team's running back and a team's wide receiver on my redraft team. Absolutely. Same game. P plug them in. They are absolute phenomenal beasts. Did you know... Um, that they are both my number one uh, ranked wide receiver and running back this week, and I think that's too low. Yeah, I'm moving them up. They're S zero tier S tier. Uh, but other possible options here: Robert Tunyon. Sure, uh, it's a very good matchup. Twenty fifth uh, against the tight end. That's what Jacksonville is ranked. It is a good matchup. He was almost my start of the week. I I couldn't quite mm. swallow that pill. But if you're out there too struggling. Jagged. Um. Yeah, it was a jagged little pill, and thank you. I would, uh, I would think Tunyon could be put in if Alan Lazard, the Lazard King, if he comes back and he actually plays in this game, are you going to play him as a wide receiver three? We we don't know that he's going to play yet, but he has been practicing the last couple weeks. He he can return this week. Are you putting him in? Or are you going to wait and see? Um. <sighs> I'm gonna wait and see. All right. I, I I think you've got to have him rostered, but on your bench. We we don't know. He's not a superstar that's waited for a significant amount of time because he's fully 100. percent Then he's put in. He's gonna go right to his snaps. He he could be limited in this game. He's not a superstar, but 
he was playing like a fantasy superstar those first three weeks. Very small sample size, but he was clearly the wide receiver too. This team needs a wide receiver too. That is not Marquez Valdez-Scanling. Oh, how dare you? Two touchdowns last week. The Philadelphia Eagles at three, four, and one take on the New York Giants at two and seven. The Giants just a shade out of the, out of the division lead here. The Eagles are favored by three and a half points. We have a 44 and a half point over under. Carson Wentz is Andy's stream of the week. Carson Wentz has a league leading 12 interceptions. Were you aware of that? That doesn't matter. For fantasy, that's <laughs> good news. Jameis Winston's special. Um, when you throw picks, especially when it's pick sixes, uh, you get to get back on the field and you got to throw the ball more. Yeah, the, the Giants are kind of right in the middle of the field in terms of allowing production for fantasy. They do have a solid defense here. So do you have any concerns with players on the Eagles side of the ball? Miles Sanders should be returning. Yeah, I, th I think that helps. Any hesitation coming off the injury? No, in, no hesitation from me. They, they, the timeline is good on the knee. They had the bye week. I think he should be good to go. Um, we'll, we'll talk about him in a little bit because I, I know that there will be people hesitant to play him. I don't think you should be. I think he should go right in your lineup. Does Boston Scott go right back to the bench? Oh yeah, Boston Scott is. W w if Miles Sanders you, is there, it sounded like you took pleasure. In, in saying that he goes right back to the bench. I take great pleasure in putting Boston Scott on the bench. As someone who has Miles Sanders in, I think, the majority of my leagues, I can't wait for Boston Scott to be irrelevant. Jalen Rager, Jason said he's going to take it up to 100. His average depth of target is 17.4. Just, whoo, boy. Hit him with the ball, Carson. Just <laughs> let him catch it. Waiver wire superstar Travis Fulgham. He's going to come in as Andy's star of the week. It is very difficult to pivot away from Travis Fulgham yes, at he, this point. He might see the James Bradbury experience. I mean, that's what you have to project. If you look back at the game log when they they played against the Giants, that was his one. It down, was his down week, down but he week. was still he, eleven targets. He was still five for seventy three. Yeah. He wasn't. He didn't rank well on the week because he get, he didn't get a touchdown. But that's not a game that is poo pooing and killing your roster. If he goes five for seventy three, you're okay. Dallas Goddard returned to much fanfare a couple weeks ago, and he ended up with uh, one target, one reception for fifteen yards, despite being on the field for eighty four percent of the snaps, despite. <laughs> Running a route on 85% of Carson Wentz dropbacks in week eight. Carson Wentz, what the heck, bro? Dude, Carson Wentz is playing some magically terrible football. <laughs> it's still good for fantasy. It's good for fantasy. Somehow he's winning enough games to, you know, keep his team in it. And, and amazingly, <laughs> some of the victories are like... You mean everyone else is losing enough games to keep his team in it? I am impressed that they have three wins. Um, and some of those wins have been entirely... At the end of the game, Carson Wentz putting the team on the back and Greg Jennings this thing. Um, but that's why I say it's magically terrible because he's also in the pocket holding the ball way too long, trying to make just huge plays every single play instead of just running an offense, missing wide open guys, both in guys that are wide open running routes and not finding them, and then also, oh, I'm going to throw this ball to not where I meant to throw it. He's just been terrible. But for fantasy, he's been fine. Uh, he's been producing enough for Fulgham. And when it comes to Dallas Goddard at tight end, you start Dallas Goddard. Everything out there said, you know, you just you just read it. He was in on enough snaps, ran 85% of the routes that Carson was throwing the ball. Carson's got a history of throwing it to tight end. He's got a history of throwing it to Dallas Goddard. It was just a bad game. It was a bad game. You know, I, I, what I think happened is Carson Wentz got used to the beginning of the season where when he targeted his tight end <laughs> – Bad things happen for the football team. Yeah, it's not Ertz anymore, Wentz. It's Goddard. not going to Ertz you. <laughs> Woof. On the Giants' side of the ball, Daniel Jones, eh, there's much better streaming options on the week. The running back, though, we've seen some touchdowns coming from the running back position. Devonta Freeman, Wayne Gallman, I believe two weeks in a row as the starter has a touchdown. Uh, Devonta Freeman did return to limited practice. How are you – approaching these running backs uh, Devonta Freeman do we get some Bruce Wayne Gallman action yeah I mean it, it really just is a matter of whether Freeman is active I think once he's activated he'll take over that starting role and can be a, a then would you play him against the 
the Eagles, who are uh, allowing the seventh most points. Or seventh I, I, least. Seventh least, thank you, uh, to fantasy running backs over the last six weeks. His, his utilization prior to the injury. On the- um, his utilization prior to the injury was s- enough to where I think you can plug him in as a desperation flex, but the matchup is bad. And the first week back from an injury in a bad matchup, that's two strikes. Uh, you got to be careful swinging that bat for that third time. So I would prefer to, uh, to bench him. Like, and if he's out, Wayne Gallman becomes that, that desperation flex. Devonta Freeman was injured the last time they played the Philadelphia Eagles. That's when he was knocked out. Uh, the wide receivers, Sterling Shepard, Darius Slayton. We expect that Golden Tate will be back from his uh, uh, benching, what mm. we will say. You playing anybody from the wide receiver core on New York? Yeah, I'm I'm going to play Sterling Shepard for sure. Targets since returning, 8, 10, 8. That's the reason. Receptions, 6, 8, 6. Um, you, you get enough balls and eventually you get a touchdown, you break something off. And, and the, the nice thing is Sterling Shepard is the best wide receiver on their team. So the nice thing is if you're giving a good wide receiver up to 10 targets, uh, you, you're going to have fantasy follow. Speaking of good pass catchers getting up to 10 targets, Evan Engram. Ooh, you said good pass catchers yes i did and you i miss spoke Mike. i stand by it evan ingram i'm going to talk about him later in the show tampa bay six and three takes on the carolina panthers who are three and six we have a palindrome matchup we got a 50 and a half point over under the bucks are favored by five and a half storylines from this game jason your uh your favorite quarterback you traded for him in the league of record tom brady Ooh. <laughs> Will he have enough salad, or has he had enough salad since the the last time we saw him on the field to replenish to get the uh, uh what is it, the chlorophyll? Yeah, I mean, I, chloroform. Maybe he needs a little bit of meat in his life. I don't know, but uh, the plant man had as bad a game as he's ever had, um, and we've we've seen him have bad games in the past. And this is a matter of do you think that this is the new normal or not? And we're going to talk about him in a little bit. I'm, oh, star- I'm starting him. I, I believe that Tom Brady is going to be a fine play this week. Now, Carolina's not a cake matchup, but they're also not a, uh, you know, they're, they're not one of those teams where you go, man, they're shutting people down at the what position. Is, just- what is a worse match or a, a more insulting matchup to call someone? You are, a, if I say, man, we got a cake matchup okay. coming. Uh, that's pretty insulting. Or, man, we got a cupcake matchup coming. Which Ooh. one is more insulting? Okay, let me... Th- why don't you, why don't you call me those things? Like we're fighting, like we're we're How, gonna go in a know. boxing ring. Jason, you're a piece of cake. Okay, Jason, you're a cupcake. Oh, cupcake feels really personal <laughs> and insulting. It really, it made me feel like I embody the cut, the shape. I'm the. I shape almost of a didn't want to say it. No, that you answered. I mean, that felt a, bad. A clear and definitive answer. This is a. It's not a cupcake matchup here. Because a cupcake matchup is terrible. Yeah, we're we're gonna have to put this one to the Foot Clan, which is more insulting, cake or cupcake. Make a note, Brooks. Uh, but let's talk about more fantasy implications. Teddy Bridgewater playing good football, not necessarily great for fantasy. He does have the fifth most passing yards. He has the third most twenty plus yard pass plays with DJ Moore and Robbie Anderson, and now the emergence of Curtis Samuel. When you look at metrics of just quality quarterback play in the NFL not fantasy relevant not you know just who's playing really good real world football Derek Carr and Teddy Bridgewater are sure. coming up on every list and they are playing very good it hasn't been translating to fantasy and it ne- it 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 won't necessarily translate to fantasy i think what we've seen with Teddy Bridgewater where he's throwing for a lot of yards he's highly accurate he's moving drives along and very often they end up in a rushing touchdown to Curtis Samuel, to Christian McCaffrey, to Mike Davis. They have a lot of ways to score that aren't through the passing game, and that's really what's hurting him is he, you know, as good as he's been, fifth most yards in the league, he doesn't have a three-touchdown passing game on the season. Yeah. Uh, At the running back position, Christian McCaffrey is not going to play. Mike Davis struts right back into your lineup. Yeah, the matchup stinks against the Buccaneers. They are ranked sixth against fantasy running backs. Don't matter. 
Mike Davis is going to see the volume. Hopefully he can get into the end zone. On the other side, though, what Ronald Jones do? trending the wrong direction. Uh, he got bruised because he fumbled, got taken off the field. Leonard Fournette, the nickelback. The nickelback has seen 18, 21, and then seven opportunities. But seven opportunities was like a huge market share because – the running backs weren't used last week. It's certainly, if you're going to play one of them, it's got to be Leonard Fournette. Okay. Because of the work in the passing game, um, Leonard Fournette would be the player that I would I would choose to play. But Where are you with Ronald Jones? Are you willing to play him as a running back too? I mean, the matchup is fantastic. Carolina has uh, – they've gotten a little bit better in the last six weeks. However, I mean, you had – Part of that is now the uh, the Kansas City game where they just decided they're not going to run the ball. They've been bad against fantasy running backs. We have been attacking this defense. We should be salivating. We should be happy to play Ronald Jones. But are we? I don't think you're happy because what you said. The arrow's been trending down after the fumble. I, I think, I mean, we this has gone according to plan, as, as wacky as it sounds. When Leonard Fournette was signed, I know – both you and I had the take that it would start with Ronald Jones as the back. Mm -hmm. They'd get Leonard Fournette more involved, and then eventually he would take over the, the you know the lion's share of the duty. And that's exactly what's happened. And now he's got the lion's share of the duty. Now, if they get down on the goal line, you're killing me by with, with, the, with the duty. Yeah, he's got the you know he's digging around in that duty. Oh. Thank you, Mike. I was laughing. You were, you were chuckling back then, yes. yeah, because you're a child, Brooks. That's fine. <laughs> Grow up. <laughs> Do your duty back there, Brooks. Lion share of duty. Uh, just, I don't know. That was just was that one struck me. All right, continue. I like it. Um, <laughs> you know, you still have touchdown opportunity. Carolina. The reason they were so bad through the first half of the year was they gave up a lot of rushing touchdowns. You get down on that goal line, I could absolutely see Ronald Jones, uh, you know, punching it in for a touchdown. So I think he is, again, in that desperation flex category. I don't want to play him. I do think Leonard Fournette is someone that should be started. At the wide receiver position, Robbie Anderson is in the fifth most targets amongst wide receivers. But this is a difficult discussion. DJ Moore, Curtis Samuel. They have flip-flopped on who is producing at the fantasy level. We know that DJ Moore can get it done. But Curtis Samuel has been stealing his milk money as of late. Who would you rather play? Curtis Samuel, does the trend continue? The NBA Jam rules say he's on fire. Yeah, I, I think you have to stay with Curtis Samuel. It's not to say you can't also plug DJ Moore in your lineup. Um, we've, we've seen him break off plenty of big plays. He could have a great game. But right now, they're using Curtis Samuel in a myriad of ways. They're using him in – short, deep, intermediate routes. They're using him as a running back. He's become an important weapon to the offense that they have uh, figured out how to get involved. So I, I think I would put Curtis Samuel this matchup ahead for this week until DJ Moore proves he's getting the targets necessary. And it's, I think it's going to be hard for him to really establish those targets since the number one read is Robbie Anderson. And to his credit, Matt... Ja Rule, head coach of the Carolina Panthers. <sighs> Murder. This is what he said he was going to do with Curtis Samuel in the preseason. And, and it it looked, uh, looked like nonsense to start the year, but as the team has evolved and they're taking shape, getting their identity, Curtis Samuel is he, he's being used how they said he was going to be used. And Christian McCaffrey is now out again, and that coincides with their – figuring out how to That's better point. use good Curtis point. Samuel. So, you know, if, if Curtis Samuel gets five or six carries, th that's great for fantasy in addition to his receiving work. Any hesitation playing any of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers wide receivers? Chris Godwin, Mike Evans, Antonio Brown. Tom Brady, the plant man, uh, he got bruised yet again because yeah. Bruce, Bruce came through with that bus driving over him saying, Mike Evans was open. Last week, I don't know why the ball wasn't going to an open Mike Evans. I mean, Bruce is he's turn he's a real Walter Matthau grumpy old man right now. Yeah, that's a perfect reference for all the Walter Matthau <laughs> fans out there. Walter Matthau was fantastic. He was okay. He always oh, annoyed dude. me because I was too young and he was just a grumpy old man. <laughs> go back, 
Go back. I think you're going to relate a lot more. Yeah, with if now. I watch it now, I'll be like, I get it, Walter. <laughs> Like, also, I don't see what the problem is. Has anybody ever been better named than <laughs> Walter Matthau? Yeah, it's like, oh, Walter. <laughs> you old so-and-so. Um, yeah, I mean, there's hesitation playing all three, and I'm willing to play all three. All there, right. uh, we don't have enough evidence as to how the ball is going to be you know, split up and who's going to have big big games and bad games. Um, I agree. I'm, I'm playing them all as, you know, Hopefully a wide receiver, too, until I can see if the dust settles. Chris Godwin is still my favorite of the bunch. I agree with that. But my, between Mike Evans and Antonio Brown, you're talking a coin flip. We still don't know. Rob Gronkowski, he's in. The matchup against the Panthers is pretty solid. Just take last week, crumple it up, throw it away in the garbage. The Denver Broncos, 3-5, and five, will be taking on the Las Vegas Raiders, who are sitting 5-3. and three. The over-under is 51 points. The Raiders are favored by five points. This game is interesting to me. It It's one of those, it doesn't seem like it should be all that interesting, but I think that there is a lot of juice that we can squeeze out of this matchup uh, at the quarterback position. They're both in play for me. Derek Carr has been better at home. Derek Carr has been putting up it's some solid fantasy, uh, some solid fantasy games. Meanwhile, Drew Locke, he only plays one quarter a game. Yeah, why? But in can't... that, but in that quarter, he gets a bunch of touchdowns. Dude, start playing in the first or even the second quarter. <laughs> Take a quarter for yourself, but play three of them. Right now, the whole I play in the fourth quarter and this don't is my warm up quarter. Yeah. Um. But the reality is, and and, and I'm you know I made uh, Drew Locke the stream of the week based on this matchup, I think this could be a really, I, I agree with you completely, could be a lot of fantasy points to be had in this game. you got the Raiders who have been bad against the run, have been bad against the pass in the last several weeks. Uh, Josh Jacobs, you're at home, you're favored by five. This appears to be a really good spot to start him. Not that you're not starting him anyways. But here's some troubling news about Josh Jacobs. Over the first four games, he was seeing about 80% of the running back carries. Over the last four games, that number has dropped into the 60s. And on top of that, has played zero snaps in a two-minute drill over the past month. That is the that is the big concern with Josh Jacobs. When we started the season and he was in on those two-minute drills and he was getting more targets, it seemed like, okay, he's not going to be so matchup dependent. It does not appear that that's the case, but that's why I said th this is a game they're at home favored by five points in Vegas. If that plays out the way that Vegas projects, then it's a plus Josh Jacobs matchup. If it turns out Denver jumps off to a lead and they're up, then then it's bad. But I mean, we you've got to you've got to call your shot before the game in order to have a projection. And I believe that the Raiders will win this game. And if they do, then Josh Jacobs had a good game. As weird as that sounds. The running backs for the Denver Broncos, Melvin Gordon, you're playing him. Philip Lindsay, though, Jason, are you are you desperate enough to play Philip Lindsay? Who, yes, he can hit the big play, but I uh, the opportunities are just not there. I mean, you're talking. He's we a, had a, we had 11 opportunities against the Falcons, nine against the Chargers, nine against Kansas City. Yeah, I mean the the matchup is really good. And he can break a long one off just like, uh, you know, if I had to choose between him and Devin Singletary, okay, I would choose Philip Lindsay because I think the matchup and the ability to score from outside of 20 yards is there with Philip Lindsay versus Devin Singletary. But I'm not excited about, you know, either of those guys hoping I have better options. Was that the breakout game for Jerry Judy against the Atlanta Falcons? 14 targets, seven for 125 and a touchdown. Perfect matchup, but do you think that that will lead into further success? As in, has Jerry Judy made his way into your wide receiver two conversation? Good matchup against the Raiders. Last six weeks, they are giving up over 35 points a game to the position. Yeah, he's certainly made his way into that conversation. Some of it took, you know, Tim Patrick being a little nicked up and um, Noah Fant, you know, missing a go good chunk of that game with the ankle injury and a great matchup. But you saw what we kind of expected against Atlanta, which was Jerry Judy should have a, a good game. And, and this is another matchup over the last six games. Like you said, 35 
0.7 fantasy points being given up to wide receivers. If you split that up and you say, okay, K.J. Hamler's going to get a few and Tim Patrick's going to get a few, there's a lot left there for Jerry Judy. Tim Patrick is in play. And, uh, yeah. Tim Tim Patrick has got two first names. He's He seems like he's come out of nowhere, but that's not true. I mean, the, the part about him having two first names, that is absolutely that true. That one's true, yeah. But he – the the Broncos like him. He he should be in play. Don't don't think of him as a oh crap, I gotta start Tim Patrick. Well, Tim, pa can, Tim Patrick's a fine flex. Yeah, I mean and, and this is this is why Drew Locke was a streamer candidate this week. Because this could be a game where Tim Patrick has a fine game and Jerry Judy has a fine game and Noah Fant has a fine game. And if those three things are true Then Drew Locke had a good game. Yeah, exactly. Henry Ruggs, Nelson Aguilar, are you going to play that dance against the Denver Broncos? Uh, I think you could play it with Aguilar. Um, he has been surprisingly consistent. It's a little bit scary because it's it's consistent and yet touchdown dependent. You know, he's got four touchdowns in his last five games. I would love to see the targets up a little bit higher. Um, so I, I think you can put Nelson Aguilar in if you need to pick between one of these two guys, but... I, again, project this to be a game where the Raiders are leading, in which case it's the, it's going to be the Broncos passing more and the Raiders running more. The Look at you. Oh, yeah. This time. This is my start of the week. It's against you. Oh. No, he's he's not. I don't oh. think we can pick. I mean, I, I would pick <laughs> Look, the Walrus every he's week. He's going to take it up to 100. I'll tell you that much. Oh, for sure. Yeah, that's my <laughs> pick for that, too. Uh, uh, almost nine targets a game for the Walrus. He is eating yet again. On the other side, though, Noah Fant. Yeah, uh, the matchup is there. Noah Fant, uh, he leads in a lot of advanced metrics for the tight end position. Do we have the courage, though, to play Noah Fant Wow, we still have no idea what's going on with that dude's ankle. Yeah, he. I mean, I think you can because of the position, right? Like, we, we talked right. about Gronk, and we just said, yeah, he's in. It, it's, it's not like Gronk is absolutely locking it down every single week. He's, he's coming off of a bad game, too. It, the reason Gronk is absolutely in your lineups is because relative to the position, if, you, if you've if got a heartbeat and – Dallas Goddard or Noah Fant? I would go Dallas Goddard this week. All right, for safety? Yeah, just because of the, the, the ankle situation with Fant, not knowing. Uh, he was a limited participant in the last practice report. I've seen, but I don't have any other update. All right, we will get to the rest of the matchups tomorrow, but now. Starts of the week. My quarterback start of the week. I think it was also my streamer, but. I mean, come on now. Jared Goff. He is also my start of the week. <laughs> <laughs> the King. Do we have the King Goff drop anywhere? Got it. Announcing Jared Goff. <laughs> Seattle giving up nearly 28 points per game to the quarterback position. That is the most. Only once have they not given up a top 12 game. Keep targeting the Seattle matchup. Jay, who you got? I've got Jared Goff. <laughs> um, as much as you want to introducing as much as I would love to start Jared Goff this week, um, I'm I'm giving a confidence play to to Tom Brady. Okay, uh, it was as bad a game as you've ever seen out of Tom Brady, and you have to make your bet: is this the new normal, or is he going to bounce back? And I've found over time that when you bet against Tom Brady, you're you know the house is going to win, and you know it, it, he's been a top ten back. The, the, the top 10 quarterback, the two previous weeks to that game. So it's not like he's been abysmal on the season. In fact, the majority of the games he's played this season, he's been a top 10 quarterback. He's been good. And the last time we saw a really, truly horrific game like this was week 16 in 2018. He threw for 126 total yards and two interceptions. Gross. Came out the next week, threw four touchdowns. Mm -hmm. I mean – he's got a chip on his shoulder from that game. I'm going to bet on Tom with those weapons. And he has Drew Brees as his quarterback start of the week. Michael Thomas is back. The 49ers have been torched for the last six weeks. And Drew Brees, we got four straight weeks as a quarterback one. My running back start of the week, it is J.D. McKissick from Washington. Smooches is back. The matchup against Detroit, they have allowed 
top five points to the running back position in three straight weeks. Antonio Gibson, a little bit banged up. I do like Gibson, though, if, if he suits up. But I wanted to highlight, in week five, J.D. McKissick saw eight targets. In week nine, J.D. McKissick saw 14 targets. <laughs> what happened in those two games? Uh, can I uh, – Alex – who is Alex Smith? That is correct. Alex Smith, and we expect him to be the quarterback. Smith likes to check down, and J.D. McKissick will be – that player. Jay, who's your running back? 14 targets. If your wide receiver gets 14 targets, that's an outlandishly great You're week. shouting from the mountains. Absolutely. Um, my, my start of the week is Miles Sanders. Again, a, a confidence push. He's coming back off an of injury. You're not sure, but he had the bye week. The timeline says he should be fine. The Giants have given up the eighth most fantasy points to running backs, and more importantly, they are tied for the second most running back receptions this season. Miles Sanders has that skill set. Um, and if you don't remember how he was before going down to injury, his 16-game pace was 1,388 yards, 9.6 touchdowns with another 300 receiving yards on 40 catches. He was really good. He's back. Plug him in. And he's going with Chase Edmonds, the matchup against Buffalo. I love it. We get it. Chase Edmonds. But. Oh, the voice of but. public opinion. Andy, Mike. <laughs> what if Kenyon Drake is back? Well, you got to talk to Andy about that one. Uh, I, I, I think that can, even if Kenny Drake is back, he's going to be limited. I would still think that Chase Edmonds will be the primary running back in this game. Buffalo is the second worst team against the run over the last five weeks, and Edmonds should see at least 20 opportunities in this game. Kenny Drake is back at practice in pads, but I think the expectation is still that he won't play this week. At the wide receiver position, I've got Jarvis Landry. We've really only seen one game with full game planning for the Cleveland Browns without Odell Beckham. It was the weather week, but it turned into 11 targets for Jarvis Landry. And until facing Jake Luton, uh, the, the Texans have been giving up four straight games of top 10 wide receiver production, including a game against Jacksonville when Minshew, and, and the, when Minshew was the signal caller. So I like Jarvis Landry to get it done this week. Jay, who you got? I'm going with Cooper Cup. I know that there's the wrist worry, but look, against Seattle, we, we talked about it with Jared Goff. You want to chase those points because uh, it's been too long where you go, well, they can't continue every week giving up. Yes, they can. Yes. They are yeah, terrible they at defense, and Russ is going to score so many points because that's what he does. I, I really would be blown away if the Sean McVay team is the first one that they shut down. Cooper Cup only has – Two touchdowns on the year. I think he could double it uh, by the end of this game. And if for some reason that wrist is an issue and he is not active, I will. My pivot is Josh Reynolds. Josh Reynolds is. I think Reynolds is in play he with is, Cooper Cup he on is the field. He's absolutely in play. Over the last two weeks, he has 17 targets. So Josh Reynolds is absolutely in play against this Seattle defense. And he's got Travis Fulgham. Fulgham has been a top 15 wide receiver three out of the last four weeks, averaging 10 targets a game. The Giants giving up 30-plus points to opposing fantasy wide receivers. And he does like Rager as well, but wanted to highlight Travis Fulgham, give this man the due that he deserves. On the last four games played, his pace would have been 108 receptions, 1,500 yards, and 12 touchdowns. Small sample, but that's pretty fun to do. Uh, at the tight end position, much to Jason's, Jason's chagrin, I am going with double E, Evan Ingram. It felt like he was disappointing the last time against the Eagles, but he still came through with six for 46 off of nine targets. Uh, that, that's passable. Yeah, that, you'll take that from your fantasy tight end. Over the last three weeks, he is averaging nearly 10 targets a week. And per NBA Jam rules, he is heating up. The tight end seven and the tight end four the last two weeks. Uh, it's so to my chagrin. I just want to speak to that really quickly. You called him a great pass catcher, and he's yeah. not because he slaps the ball and doesn't catch it. He has a great offensive weapon. Yes, I'm okay. totally fine with that. And for the record, if if you wouldn't have had him in there, he would have been my start of the week. Oh, so yeah, I mean, well, it, okay. Then. It is a wonderful play. Uh, all the metrics point to him having a good game, and I'm happy you have him in because I won't have the disappointment. <laughs> <laughs> that comes from Evan Ingram letting us down. My start of the week at tight end is Austin Hooper. Uh, talked about it. I uh, even even with you know some potential bad weather there, short targets. That's Austin Hooper's game. 
remember, he was new to this team, new to the scheme, and in the first three games of the month, you you kind you or the season, you went. And Hooper's not what we thought he was when they paid him and made him the highest paid tight end in the league at that time. But then the next three games, he was averaging 7.7 .7 targets a game. That's a lot. That's 123 target pace. For context, Travis Kelsey was 136 last year. Kittle was fewer than uh, 123 pace. Houston is a plus matchup. I mean, tight ends are all barfy. You yep. can definitely start Austin Hooper this week. And Andy's got... His own double E, Eric Ebron, my start of the week last week, but I love it here. Eric Ebron is set up for a while. Cincinnati, terrible against the tight end, the worst in football, in fact, over the last five weeks. And Eric Ebron has been inside the top ten the last two weeks, on, mostly on the back of a touchdown. But the opportunity is there. And uh, over the last five games, Eric Ebron is actually on a near 100 target pace. Ebron's been good. He has. And the Bengals have been bad. So this is like a really nice combination. <laughs> all right, the moment we've all been waiting for. Jason Moore's Ironclad, Locked and Loaded, 100% guaranteed boom, boom, kicker of the week. <sighs> Look, everyone loves the boom, boom, but I don't, I don't get the big futs. Just do yourself a favor and start the Saints Will Lutz. I think that's the first time you got me. You got the lull before the rhyme even happened. Oh, you knew where it was going, huh? Yeah. <laughs> with the, with the I, old futz. God, I did a deep dive. I did my detective work, and I figured out what was about to happen. Uh, shout out to our friends at Pristine Auction, the best sports memorabilia site of all time. Whoo, doggy. And Alan Robinson signed jersey just. $55. Somebody want to sign Alan Robinson jersey for just $55. Go check them out. PristineAuction.com. Use our registration code BALLERS because then they'll know that we sent you and you will get a $10 credit for your first auction victory. Jason. That's going to do it. I think we gave the, the Foot Clan a little bonus-sized episode today. Oh, fantastic. When best friends get talking, oh. you, we cannot be stopped. Foot Clan, we'll see you tomorrow. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.